In this video, we are going to conduct a comparative overview of the Add and Split tool as well as the Knife tool in 3D Coats retopology and modeling workspaces. The Knife tool provides similar cutting functionality as the Add and Split tool. Nevertheless, there is a major difference. The Knife tool has more options than the Add and Split tool for cutting, but the Add and Split tool performs multiple functions. For example, you can build geometry from scratch, or you can continue building on pre-existing geometry. You can fill in gaps. You can tweak the geometry as you work. So it's very versatile, and please allow me to demonstrate it quickly before I move on to the Knife tool. So with the Add and Split tool, you can click on a voxel object or surface mode object and just start creating geometry this way. You can also right mouse button click to tweak the position on the fly of any vertex or edge. You can see the edge is highlighted and I can right mouse button click and move that as well. You can also delete an edge by hovering over it and hitting the delete key. I'll we'll build some geometry here and then continue building. When you have surrounding polygons, you can connect just these two vertices in order to fill that gap. Let me try to create a little bit more here. I will temporarily use the delete polygons tool and go back to the end split tool. If I hold a shift key, you will see the highlighted boundary letting me know that I can now click to fill that gap or to fill that open space with a polygon. I will go ahead and use the delete polygons tool to just brush delete all of these. Yeah, going back to the add split tool. And before I resume, I want to make sure that I am on the right UV sets because if I try to create some more polygons, you'll notice how they are much brighter than this mesh. And that's because this dull color is an indication that the mesh that I'm working on here in the polygroups panel is not assigned to the same UV set as the one currently selected. As soon as I select the right UV set, now you'll see the color suddenly changes to something that's much more vibrant. In terms of cutting, the next example will highlight the major difference between the knife tool and the add and split tool. The add and split tool will currently only allow the user to cut from one vertex or edge to another, but not across multiple edges or vertices in the same cut. When I'm done cutting, I can hit escape to stop the cutting operation, and that allows me to move on to the next vertex or edge in order to start a new cut elsewhere or make some tweaks with the same tool. I can right mouse button click to tweak the position of the vertex or the edge. And then, as I mentioned, if I try to click here, it won't do anything, right? It will just assume that I'm trying to build uh, geometry. That's not what I want. So. Again, I have to click one at a time, an edge or a vertex, it doesn't matter. And as I mentioned before, we can clean things up by hovering over an edge and then hitting the delete key. So again, it has a lot of usefulness still, and that's why it's still in the application. But the knife tool gives you more control for cutting and also options, as you can see from the tool options panel. One important note here is in this video, at the top of the tool options panel, you see a tolerance parameter, but that's gonna be removed in the next build because it doesn't really apply to this particular tool. So we will just focus on these other options here. Now, the first one is cut only with the current polygroup, and that will ensure you are cutting only on the mesh of the selected polygroup layer. Quads only will try to create only quads as the name implies, but you will from time to time see some triangles. Before I cover the next option, generate multi-shape polygon, let me first show the basic operation of the knife tool. When I hover over a vertex, you'll see it highlighted red. As soon as I click it, it will change to blue, indicating that it is now active. It is starting the cut at this point. And then each successive click will create another blue circle. 
along an edge or over a vertex. So I can continue, continue, and then let's say I want to stop here. I can click. It doesn't matter where I move my cursor now because 3D Coat is only going to cut from the first to the last blue circle. When I hit enter, it will make the cut. Alternatively, I can do this. When I know that this is the last one, I can just double click instead of having to hit the enter key afterwards. Okay. As I was talking about earlier, I want to make sure that I highlight the main difference. And that is with the add split, you can only go one edge at a time. Here you can cross multiple edges to make your cut. All right. Generate multi shape polygon. Let's click on that. Now it goes by the number of vertices. So if we want to create an octagon or a hexagon uh, or any other type of shape, uh, this is very helpful in doing that. So 3D Coat will go by the initial click as your center of scaling and rotation. So as you continue to hold down your mouse or stylus and then rotate, you can rotate that shape. But as you move it to the left or to the right, it will scale it also. And I can click or I could hit the Enter key. So I'll do it again. Now this time I want to crank that up, let's say 32, and then drag it out. And I can actually make a circle. Click once, right, there we go. So let's do it again. So that's really all I have to do is click once. I don't have to double click. Now, if we have a situation where we want to create multiple shapes, such as the windows, we can create a curve with the closed spline draw mode. We'll see our curves editor appear. And now we can create a curve that we can reuse over and over if we want. So let me hide a few of these. And I will select this one. And what I can do is select the transform tool in the curves editor and reposition that. I don't have to be super precise because I can have 3D Coat snap it to the surface. If I'm done with the transform gizmo, I can hit the escape key to drop that. I'm going to switch to the delete edges tool. I need to get out of the close spline draw mode. I'm sorry. Hold down the control key. The control key will select contiguous edges. Okay, so I can do the same thing here. Uh, oops, undo. So we may have an extra one here. Let's go back now to the knife tool. If I want, I can snap it to the surface. It's not actually necessary for me to make this cut, but I want to Tweak the position first. Let's make it between these polygons here. Okay, I hit the escape key. I want to make sure I emphasize a point here. Currently, as of this recording, if you are still in the closed spline draw mode where you have the curves editor open, 3D Coat, when using this tool, will assume that you're still trying to edit and create curves. So we need to come out of that. We need to go back to mesh editing mode. And to do that, really, we just need to select a brush, any brush. You can right click and choose snap to surface. Now that spline is snapped to the surface underneath the voxel object or surface mesh object. Now with that done, I can also click snap spline. And you might also think of this as 
pick spline. Essentially, this allows you to pick the shape. So I'll click that first, then pick that shape. You'll notice how it's highlighted now, even more than it was previously. And it was highlighted because this was in uh, spline segment editing mode. Now that the shape has been picked and highlighted, we are ready to proceed to cut by hitting the Enter key. And that is it. So I'll hide the curve, and we can see our cut. And with that, we will conclude this overview and comparison of the Add and Split tool and the Knife tool in 3D Coat's retopology and modeling workspaces. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.